Now, over 2,000 rapes were reported in Gauteng in the final three months of 2022. That's an average of roughly 25 people a day. This emerged during the release of third quarter crime statistics yesterday by Provincial Police Commissioner Elias Mawela. To discuss these worrying figures, we're joined now by Luke Lamprecht. He's the head of advocacy at Women and Men Against Child Abuse. Thank you very much, Mr. Lamprecht, for uh, joining us here on ENCA. Uh, obviously outraged by the numbers that uh, were released yesterday uh, but if you had to look at it and narrow it down do you think Gauteng is the is uh, you know one of the unsafe areas that uh, women and children can live in at the moment well in in terms of my experience it's mainly in Gauteng mm. and I mean we get the cases daily so I mean the the statistics that have been reported sort of bear out our experience that on a daily basis we are getting reports Bearing in mind that we also work primarily with children, so, you know, we don't see the adult cases. Mm. So, you know, this is where children are at risk in our particular um, organization. Yeah, and I think that's uh, uh, mainly what uh, was concerning as well for me is that uh, we saw even nationally how much more children are being raped or killed lately in South Africa, not just in Gauteng. Look, the, the stats when you break them down are, are quite interesting because in Gauteng they report an increased rape in adult women, mm. which is mainly in homes and public places, which is related to GBV. But in Gauteng they actually report a, a decrease in the cases of reported sexual assaults against children, but an increase in the attempted cases of rape. So the, the, when you break the statistics down, we, we have to be very mindful that, you know, rape is already, particularly in children, a very underreported crime. Mm. And in that context, the underreporting of the crime is going to continue if people don't have faith in the system. So the fact that there is a decrease in the statistics with children doesn't mean there's a decrease in the incidence of rape again. Mm -hmm. But of course, the other worry, you know, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Lamprecht, for, for, for a lot of people is that, uh, you know, police or government cannot be the only people who try to sort out social ills in South Africa. It's a societal issue and society should also be involved, especially when you look at children. You talk about the fact that uh, a lot of uh, people don't even report these cases. This is mostly, isn't this mostly in, 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 in adult uh, people or, or adult women who are raped? Children sometimes don't even feel safe telling uh, their family members, their own parents, or parents, as we've seen in many cases, reject the children when the children try to tell them that maybe they were raped by an uncle etc so it's not something right that can that can only be eradicated by police or government there's no doubt about that because even if you look at the way the statistics were presented the majority of the sexual assaults uh, occurred at home and in public places and in our experience with children's cases in particular you know upward of 96 percent of the people who sexually assault children are well known to them and you're often in a position where these people either for example provide for the family or you know there's going to be some family backlash and as a result there's a massive disincentive for the children to disclose and in fact that's why the sexual offenses act has made the mandatory reporting of a sexual assault against children kind of a if you don't report it you've committed a crime because they know the circumstances where adults are protected and children are not heard Mm. Uh, do you see any difference since that uh, policy, if I may call it that, that uh, the basic education department implemented, uh, saying that it is the on, on the onus of the teacher to find out if a child who's under the age of 18 is pregnant at school? They need to find out from that child who made them pregnant and report that person, especially when it's found that that person is older and it's statutory rape. Is it making any difference? I think it's an incredibly important thing for the Department of Education to continue to implement because, you know, once a child is pregnant, doesn't mean they were made pregnant by sexual assault because of mm. the ages of consent. 
So we need to always remember that we want to report things to open a set of services to children. The aim of reporting is not always to prosecute somebody. So if a child of 13 is falling pregnant and the, um, the father of the child is 15, we still want it reported. While it may not be a crime, those children still need a set of services open to them. So we need to also recognize that reporting in terms of the Sexual Offences Act is absolutely for prosecution and holding people criminally accountable. But in terms of the Children's Act, the reporting is there to open a set of services to the children and obviously the unborn child. Mm. And uh, in terms of police services itself, you know, you talk about a lack of trust in the system. Is there anything else that you'd like to see as an organization to make children feel safe to go straight to the police if maybe their parents are not hearing them when they report uh, being sexually assaulted? Look, my, my direct experience, and particularly under COVID and subsequent to COVID, is that if a child goes on their own to the police, they stand zero chance mm. of opening a case on their own behalf. They always want some adult there as an, so almost like an agent to assist the child to sort of um, claim and realise their rights to protection in terms of policing. So I think we need an, an, an enormous amount more training of the police. And then obviously we need to encourage support of adults to be present for children because those supportive adults are the people who are there to guide the child through the process. Because remember, opening the case is only one part of it. You know, after that, it's, you know, going to court, it's court preparation, it's counseling, it's therapy. It's, there's a whole range of services children require once they've entered the system. So, you know, we need to be looking to sort of social parents. I'm talking about sort of teachers and coaches and pastors, um, uncles, aunties, grannies. You know, if, if something's happening in a family, you need another person in the community to assist the child to realize their rights, mm. because I can guarantee you on their own, it's never going to happen. And mm. finally, really what we want to see is that, you know, the, the president's um, mandate in GBV as one yeah. of his five point plan to make it a victim centric approach that that is actually realized because as it stands at the moment it is the exact opposite and there are many disincentives to disclosure mm. and although we've seen an increase in the um, rape statistics I believe they are much higher yeah. because there is no reporting. Mm. Well thank you very much for speaking to us. Very sad uh, statistics there Mr. Lamkert. Thank you for your time. That was Head of Advocacy at Women and Men Against Child Abuse, Luke Lampert.